So of all great pitching performances you've seen, where does Cooper's on Friday stack up? Cooper's performance the other night was extremely impressive. I don't know if I have a ranking system of where it where it goes, but everyone who was in attendance or watched it online uh, saw that it was extremely elite. Everything that he did was working right. Fastball changeup, in, out, up, down, um, slider, mixing in for strikes and also putaways. 17 strikeouts, pretty impressive. Um, you know, and I'm sure when he didn't go out for the ninth, everyone was <laughs> pretty bummed to not see him go out there and strike out a couple more guys. But um, elite level performance, and when he's on, that's the kind of stuff that we expect to see. And Rich is calling pitches, but when a guy is that dialed in, do you guys ever think about just like say, we trust you out there, go ahead, you're, everything's working? Well, there's a mix. I mean, a lot of times yeah, Coach Norman's putting his input in there for what pitches are, you know, it's suggested to be thrown right there. Um, I don't think anyone prepares for a series as hard as Door does when it goes to, um, you know, knowing the opposing hitters and where their holes are and also sitting there and reading our guys and what's working and where they're going to have the best success. But uh, as Door calls in the suggestions, you know, that can also be filtered from the catcher and then ultimately the pitcher who's the one who has to be convicted behind each pitch. So um, there's a reason you're rolling too, right? Someone's calling, if, if someone's calling the game, then you want to stick with it. There's been several times I remember calling a game with a guy and then all of a sudden he starts shaking me off. I'm like, what are you shaking me off for? Oh, I, just, I, I, I want to do this one now. We've been doing that. I go, the other way has been working pretty good. Um, there's a mix there. It's just nonstop communication when those guys are in the dugout between innings. They do a great job planning for the next inning, um, you know, the next three, four hitters. And really, however it ends up happening, I'm sure there's a handful of times where Coop says, no, you know, I really want to throw this one. Well, having conviction and knowing thyself pretty good uh, tends to work out well. So Tanner is a true freshman back there. I mean, catching more with Gavin Logan up and out the last week or so. How has he sort of grown as that communication as a, as a true freshman behind the plate? Uh, Tanner's done a great job. I mean, he does a elite level job catching the low pitch. Um, he is very relaxed behind the plate, stays with the low target, which allows him to work uh, from bottom up as opposed to some guys having a higher target and pushing balls out of the zone. Um, and so it, just his willingness to continue to learn on uh, where he needs to get better and then also keep his strengths his strengths is extremely important. We saw it yesterday in uh, the game up at Hillsboro, um, how well he caught the ball uh, down in the zone and also on the edges. Um, but, you know, that playing time, he, when he was here this last summer playing for the Knights, he got a ton of experience in playing against um, a really good competition for a championship team um, and I think that also prepared him for this level to be successful. Uh, Gav has been down with um, you know some ankle stuff right now uh, but he's getting better and better but you know both guys it's, it's we're very fortunate we have two catchers that really care really prepare um, both offensively and defensively are uh, very strong um, let's say base running you know it's Maybe the only thing we can continue to improve on, but that's part of our catcher life. The legs don't want to move as fast as our mind does sometimes. Where, where does he sort of compare as an athlete, as a catcher, running-wise? I mean, I wouldn't say he's not Jacoby Ellsbury running around out there. Few few people are, but I think when he's um, on the bases, his intent is to you know score runs, uh, much like all of our guys. Um, and I think the the more he gets on base and uh, understands like how to advance on ball and dirt or what to do. You don't have to be the fastest guy on the field to be an elite level base runner. Um, so just like today at practice, that's something that we're going to work on is this little things that help each of us uh, get to the next 90 feet. Uh, do we have any update on Jake Fenix? Yeah, he's getting better. He's getting better. He's getting closer. I would say um, just from watching him in his, his last couple of bullpens that it's you know, he's throwing more and more pitches and uh, feeling good about his throwing program, and he's recovering really well. So I would anticipate um, things keep going that way. We'll see him soon. For, like, a pitching performance, like, on Fridays, does that, you know, kind of play, like, a domino effect in your uh, bullpen a little bit? Like, how does that affect your bullpen? Like, when you have a great performance like that, do you think it, like, pushes your pitchers? Does it put more stress on them? How do you feel like your team is, like, reacting? No, I, really, I think it helps the bullpen a ton when you see a pitcher going out there. 
you want to take the ball and go finish the game and and you feed off his his emotions our, our hitters do the same thing when you a pitcher's going out there and his tempo's great and he's filling up the zone forcing weak contact or striking guys out the atmosphere here gets elite guys go in the dugout and they want to score runs behind them and maybe sometimes we try to do too much because we want it so bad um, but really it also keeps us in a good spot for the following couple days um, to make sure we have a lot of guys that are fresh and ready to go out and compete as opposed to you know guys getting up every inning it, it's tough when uh, starter doesn't go very long, throws a lot of pitches, and then you have guys in the pen that are <clears throat> constantly getting hot, and by the time they go in, they can get worn down. So uh, having a performance like that, I think, sh leads by example, no doubt, but it also helps keep the guys fresh. And then what role is that going to kind of play going into this weekend, another tough Pac-12 opponent? Role as far as? Like what, the pitching. What role well, is it going to play in this series coming up? Well, out? Coop's going to start on Friday, and he's going to go out and do his thing. And, um, you know, obviously when he's on, we know what can happen. And when he doesn't have his best stuff, he's still really good. Um, but the way he prepares and shows up to the weight room the next day after his outing and goes about his business, uh, we always anticipate him showing up and doing what he did last week. Um, but really all the guys, some guys getting touches yesterday and refining some things. And right now, about midpoint through the season, you can sit back and you have a good sample size on, on what guys have been doing. Um, sometimes it's a mental thing. Sometimes it's a physical thing. And sometimes it's just, you know, breathing easy and letting it rip rather than thinking too much. So uh, right now we, we're starting to understand why guys are doing well right on right or where guys are maybe struggling against left-handers. Um, what pitch usage we're, you know, we're using on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, location sometimes matters, so that plays into, like today, how we do our throwing program. If guys are working on fastball command, glove side down, we should see that in their throwing program and their flat work. Um, and just being more specific with those kind of things. How we come out of the bullpen, making sure that we're ready to go pitch one, um, executing a down in the zone or if a breaking ball if needed. I think those are just all things that by now we have a good understanding of and so we can adjust our work accordingly.